Beyond the Fairway podcast, Will, this is an interesting week, man. We're coming off the heels of probably the biggest announcement of our lives in the PJ Tour golf with this PIF arrangement and all this other shit that we, that has just, I feel like it's divided the space. But you are yet in another hotel room. Where, where, where the hell is Will Lowry this week? Man, I am here and <laughs> I knew you going to say that. I did that on purpose that time. Uh, <laughs> we're here. Uh, you the I most here saying MFR I know, man. We're here. I am here. Where are um, we not here? Uh, we're in LA, man. LA uh, for for the U.S. Open. You know, uh, USGA uh, asked asked me and uh, Roger Steele to come out and and um, kind of you know host some events, host some uh, some some uh, uh, you know panel discussions and and just kind of somewhat bringing people together, man. You know, USGA is is, is going all out when it comes to the, you know, with the community portion. And uh, I'm just excited. But one thing I'm really excited about that USGA is, is doing, uh, they have a, they Doug, they have a pathway internship program that is it so. A pathway internship program. It's pretty dope. I mean, it's, it's basically a, 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 a way to get kids in, excuse me, students who students, come from various yeah. backgrounds different clubhouses into the game of golf and they i like how you say different clubhouses because that's that's a that's a very nice way to say from varying backgrounds <laughs> exactly like, you know i'm, I'm like, trying to get like, my own i'm trying to get my own e and i uh uh coding you, up in here that's it got but, your uh, own, but got your own jargon i love it but but it's it's it's, it's dope what they're doing man it, it, they give a, a, a all-out experience you know just kind of trying to grow the game amongst these individuals come from different clubhouses and they do this every week uh of every open every year and so i mean they they have um uh a thing where you know it's, it's intense curriculum it's intense curriculum where they provide you know uh leadership training they provide uh network opportunities hands-on experience uh here at the u.s open and it's just an amazing uh program internship that they have and and i just love what they're doing so i'm gonna be speaking to some of the kids this week about it and and i uh can't wait so so you and Roger going to speak to the kids about how to have a career in golf. So Roger going to be out there talking about, so you take your phone and you hold it like this and then, and then. <laughs> nah, right. I mean, shit, right. Shit. These kids need to see what Roger doing. He, he, Roger is dope with his, with his, at what he do. You know, he, he made a, a great career out of it and he's, uh, he's probably the pinnacle. He's killing it. He's killing it. I mean, shit, I, 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 I look up to him in the social media space. So cap. shit, that's cap. I don't give a damn what you say. That's cap. That's, that's yeah, I do. You, you you're about? saying that shit for the camera. Don't do me like that. Roger, I do look up to him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do look up to him. And I gotta he, give Roger he, he, he a little do. smoke. I gotta give Roger a little smoke. Roger didn't call me back, so I'm mad at, at the one they call Steel. But you know what? Somebody else is really holding it down. Uh especially out there in the LA space all over the world. We got Steve Malbun coming in here to go beyond the fairway with his will, and I don't think we should we should hold it up anymore. I mean, why not? Let's just go beyond the fairway with Steve Malbun. Steve Malbin is at the table today. Will, we got we got arguably the king of LA in the golf space or just the king of LA period with us today. I'm Steve, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna get to you in just a second, but Will, we got royalty with us right now, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think his he runs deep in LA, bro. Like if you if you if you if you want to get somebody got you know, you know, I think I think I, I can't I'm not saying Steve Malbin would do it. But he know about eight degrees of separation that we can get done. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, if, Mr. Bobble was come- good, man. <laughs> I couldn't be better. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, I'm honored to be here with you too. Legends. Man. Man, okay, I'm glad. Shoot. Okay, I'm glad you got the email. I sent you to say that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. he did. He did. He did get that. <laughs> Hold on. So, so Steve, I know you. You a Virginia Beach guy. You, you've 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 conquered LA. You've moved up to Pebble Beach. Like, what's like, are you allergic to water? Like, what's the, or allergic to land? Like, you just got to stay around water. What's what's the deal with all these beaches, man? He about a, he about them beaches. Exactly. I'm a Pisces, you know. I'm a Pisces, and uh, uh, the the water soothes your soul to some degree. And there's there's good golf courses on the coastal environments, maybe. Okay. All right. That Keep- explains that explains why the golf ball of yours always goes in the water. I- exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Flat thickens. Man, so, so Stevie, look, let's 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 get into this because uh there's no way people nowadays don't know Malvin golf and, and kind of your contributions to the game. Let's just touch on it briefly. Like you you turned a mood board into a global brand. How do you how the hell do you do that? 
Uh, I think just like the, the you know, I, I, I worked in the ad agency world and I worked in New York City and I worked in entertainment marketing and, and um, you know, graffiti and fashion and skateboarding and art and all this type of like not golf stuff. So there was a point where I started golfing, you know, addicted to golf and I would play every day and I would ask my friends like, hey, do you want to play golf? And I wouldn't get a no, I'd get a hell no. <laughs> like I'm not going near the golf course. And you know, I, I grew up golfing. I caddied in, in Atlanta, um, and in Georgia, and I worked at a golf course when I was twelve years old. So like I love golf. I love the traditions of golf. I love the game of golf. I just never really love certain parts of the more of the lame side of it that you know let's talk, let's get into it. What's what's the lame part? What's the lame side? I think just like people you know, that the, there's a side of it that's like, you know, I think sometimes it's like you'll have like a boardroom and the boardroom will sit and they'll say, we want to do X, Y, Z. We want, you know, people like this and people like this and younger people and women. And we want all these things as part of our club as we modernize into the future. And then I think they say, ah, I'm just kidding. Let's go play golf. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what, let me ask you this question. How far, how far do you, how far do you think we're away from the lames getting out of golf. Damn. Okay. I mean, I think it's like I saw it with skiing and snowboarding. Like ski culture hated snowboarders, and they were like, "We're not into this snowboarding thing." They have baggy pants. They have chain wallets. You know, they're playing music. Like this is not Aspen, Colorado, and Aspen is a good example. Who, for a really long time, they had no snowboarders allowed. So they wanted to stay pure. They wanted to do you know, everything to keep snowboarders out of, off the snow. And I think at some point it just breaks, like that mentality breaks. And they said, you know, it's okay. We're going to have skiers and snowboarders together. And that's what you have now at every resort in the world. But I lived in Colorado when it was like, you couldn't snowboard. Maybe, maybe 20% of the resorts would let you snowboard. And the other 80% were like, we don't like snowboarders. So I think that's a, a thought. And then I saw it happen in like, you know, fashion houses over in Europe too, where they were like, look, we want aristocrats, we want rich people, we want um, old royals and, and old money in the front row of the fashion shows. And then at some point, you know, you got a bunch of weirdos in the front seats and <laughs> artists and musicians and the aristocrats are gone. So like, I don't know how much longer, but I know that, you know, it's like a movement happening and people like you guys and, you know, our brand and a bunch of other brands and golf tournaments and communities. And so it's like all of us together are definitely making it harder for, you know, that group of dudes in the, in the boardroom to say, we're just kidding. Let's just golf with, with us again. You know, like it's going to happen. Um, so I think that was the lame side. And then the, the, the basically like, really cool fun friends of mine being like dude i don't want nothing to do with golf like i'm not going near a golf course why would you it's like because golf's the best like you're just seeing it the wrong way golf is the best and you know so i think it's two sides the the older guard is starting to kind of lighten up and realize that young people aren't as bad as you may think and the younger people are realizing that these cool ass old dudes that are on the golf course are awesome you know, and so it's like double-sided sword. It, it it seems like there's there's a bit of a cognitive dissonance there. But when it comes to like the spark of you know your brand, you know the clothing company, how, what 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 prompted you to spark? What, what prompted you to start this clothing brand? Was it just because you want to, you know, change the way golf looks as a whole from the from the apparel standpoint? I think I was going, to, I was addicted to golf and I would go to Roger Dunn with like a pocket full of money burning a hole in my pocket and I'd be dying to buy clothes and anything. And I'd stay in there for like an hour and talk to stra strangers about like bounce of wedges and the new, <laughs> you know, hybrid and just chatting up golf with strangers because I'm addicted to golf and I would want to buy stuff, but I would leave with like a new, you know, Titleist glove and a dozen Pro V1s. What, what, that what, was year, it. What, what year was that? Was that was that during <laughs> right, like nine years was ago? That, okay, I know that was Taylor made burn a bubble. Or are we talking about the art? <laughs> no, man? no, this was no. like seven, ten years ago, like just before we started the brand. We started the brand around seven years ago. The mood board Instagram started about eight or so. 
And um, yeah, I was just seeing a hole in it. Like, you know, people were very into like dry fit and workout gear and it had lost its like, you know, the, the what I grew up on was like Freddie Couples and like khakis and GQ and people dressing and Payne Stewart and like that whole golf fashion thing where like, I love getting dressed up to go play a nice golf course. I mean, that's yeah. part of it. You know, like on a Sunday, if I'm going Blaze, to Riviera, yeah, your clothes yeah, laid I put out, my dude. outfit out. I get my cashmere. You know, like I want to put on. I want to put on a look when I go somewhere. I don't want to only wear what the PGA Tour players are wearing or what the you know European Tour guys are wearing. And and when before we started the brand, there was really like you had two options: wear like Ralph Lauren, you know, just standard slacks, or you could buy like golf pants. And I never really quite understood why you need golf pants to play golf. Yeah, a long way from Cutter and Buck. <laughs> yeah, but I no. like that stuff, you know? It's just, but I don't see why you have to wear golf pants. Like, you need to wear pants that a shirt tucks into and a belt. And if you're wearing Stussy pants or, you know, Ralph Lauren pants, it's pretty much the same thing as a golf pant, a quote-unquote golf pant. It's just like you have to wear pants. Yeah, but the thing is, like, and I respect kind of how you've kind of kind of the OG of the, of the golf fashion landscape. But when we start talking about like what you've done, I've started to see more and more golf alternative golf kind of opportunities. When we talk about the Bogey Boys or the East Side Golf or or hell, I, I can't keep up with all the fashion. Do you find it competition now, kind of in the golf dope shit no. space? Or is it like still this like group of like everybody kind of coming together to make golf look kind of how you envisioned it? Maybe it's just not in Melbourne or it's just kind of like whatever your swag is. Yeah, I mean, I don't see it as competition. Like my our, my biggest competition is probably just myself. And if I stay inspired and I get up and I work and I get after it, you know, and there's a lot to do. So, you know, I have kids. I try to design where my kids look at it and say, you know, I love that dad. Like that's the competition of just like keeping myself you know, inspired, but I saw it happen with like fashion menswear before they had like magic and urban and all of these different things that happen, but it takes a lot of people to create a movement, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the better that Eastside does, the better that Bogey Boys do, the better that all of these brands do, it's almost like an avalanche and, you know, we're kind of on the tip of the avalanche, but it's all pushing the game forward. So I'm super into every brand. The most smallest, obscure, weird, cultural, you know, brands are my favorites. The community, the, I like the community more than I like the brands. And I think the communities create the brands. You know, it's, fun, it's funny you say that because, I, and I'm glad you say that. because I think for, I'm about to say some people outside looking in, but also maybe internally, uh, when we come from the golf aspect, that they look at the different clothing brands as competition. And and it, it, it's not, in fact, competition. It's, it's all building community towards towards a common goal. What what do you say when you hear people talk about the competition amongst you know the East Side and the uh, Malbon and Trap Golf and whatever you know? Like what I do don't you even. Say? I mean, I don't see it as competition. Like I'm not, I'm not looking at what they're doing. And that's not inspiring me. I'm also not looking at like Travis Matthew. Like I'm not. Right paying attention to what they're doing. I'm just trying to do like, you know, I think like me as a designer, it's the same way as like anybody, like you guys get up and you dress yourself and you, you put a look on and you think like, I look great. And then when you go to the coffee shop at five people say, damn, you look great. I like your outfit. Like you're just lucky. Yeah. You know, like I'm dressing myself for me. And if other people want to wear the same stuff, then God bless, you know, that. So it's like, I'm not, competing with anyone and and i'm not competing with the big guys or the little guys yeah. I, and I'm, I'm i'm glad you say that because I, I i just i get i get upset from the narrative that people who are within the golf space have people who are outside of golf space say i'm a i'm a malbon guy or i'm a you know and i understand brand loyalty but you know it's all we, we're part of a movement here and, yeah. and 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 i really i really appreciate you saying that so, yeah, yeah. But, but it's also too interesting because uh, in in doing so, in combining the the fashion and the graffiti, the skateboard, the hip hop, urban flair, 
you have created uh, this this community of, of people that that enjoy that are enjoying the game like you've grown the game um there's like 30 questions i can spin off to but let's stay on the community tip how gratifying is it though to see like people really kind of with what you putting out yeah it's cool like i said the thing is like a mood board when i started instagram i was putting up like weirdo golf stuff and traditional golf stuff back to back back to back and, you know, next thing you know, we had like 20, 30, 40, 50,000 followers. And my wife was like, we should turn this into a business because all you want to do is talk about golf. All you want to do is golf. And so like when, you know, when someone starts talking about golf, like I just said, I'll just talk to strangers about wedges and bounce and like anything golf I'm in. So, you know, my job is to design and play golf. And I tell people, you know, it, it beats work. <laughs> It beats work, right? Like but, it's good. I caddied in Atlanta. That beats work. Yeah, yeah. What, but but what but I, people are gravitating toward. Like you've got the Melbourne Golf Club. You have an events. You've got different things where you've leveraged the brand yourself to bring, like, to give like people a bear hug and make them feel. I don't say safe, but seen. I guess would be a better kind of, you know, way that people are gravitating toward kind of the lifestyle that that you're adding to. Yeah, that came from like me playing in like men's club in, in, in LA where like I would go play at like Brookside Men's Club and like it's the most furthest thing from safe or welcoming or seen. It's like you're playing golf with three strangers. They're not helping you find your ball. They're basically <laughs> angry. They're judging you. And like this is my option. And then I, you know, I've played in tons of like celebrity charity monday you know golf tournaments where you raise money and that's like hit and giggle you know mm -hmm. in 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 pencil scorecards right so like that i never really had the pencil other is like yeah. but the other is like country clubs where you go play in a member guest and i already pretty much know exactly who's in the tournament before i arrive i know you have these members and these guests and member members and country clubs so there really wasn't an opportunity to have like a big group of 100, 150 people, you know, of all walks of life, men, women, juniors, all playing together. And um, I think that's what it's really the community and these tournaments. And we're, we're doing them kind of all over the country and world now. We're doing them in Korea. We're doing them in Japan. And like, it's all about just like you said, like being seen and feeling safe and, and you know, not being with one specific type of person. Like it's like a melting pot and that's really inspiring where you have like young, very hip, cool people playing golf with old kind of really rich, not cool people, if you will. And it makes the young guy feel old and rich and it makes the old guy feel young and hip and everyone's having a great time. <laughs> Using golf as a conduit. What, when, it, when it comes to like, um, you know, putting your pieces together, how, how if you can kind of give me a, a brief synopsis from womb to tomb, how does that work? So you see the inspiration. Okay. So I got that you. on a piece of clothing. How does that So basically that I just, I designed like off of a dream. So I designed like, um, I'll give you an example. We just did a mob and golf and yacht club. So I have a dream. I'm going to take a yacht and I'm going to travel around somewhere and go play golf with my family. So on that yacht, I need to dress myself for golf and for yacht team. So yeah, the the um in in designing in the dream, I was wearing seersuckers, I was wearing linens, I was wearing polos, I was wearing you know slides, sandals, I was wearing shoes that could be worn as sandals. Like the dream dictates what products I need to dress myself for, not only me but for my wife and my kids. And like, what are we gonna wear in this dream? And then that you know, a year or two later, the collection comes out. We're doing a photo shoot with Jesper Parnovic on a yacht with him and his daughters as the as the models but that came from uh, a dream of me golfing on a yacht so, so i would imagine and, 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 but you know what though i would imagine i'm not being funny here i would imagine there, there has to be some dreams that keep you up at night because you're so anxious to get to get it started correct well they, they it gets me up early i don't have a hard time going to bed at night but i have a hard time sleeping <laughs> past 5 a.m that's for sure but steve it it, it lends to a good question though like you talk about the necessities right that you needed to create that line let's talk about your golf necessities when you pull up to the course like like steve malbon's pulling up to the golf course what's what what do you have to have in the bag to, to make sure your day goes right 
range finder or a caddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, simple, dog. you gotta know where you're going, right? <laughs> yeah, the putter, my my putter that I'm liking. <laughs> um, you know, some golf balls that that they're no gonna... speakers, no nothing to twist nah, up. You just nah, use that. nah. I, we no. we didn't when we when we played uh uh up up in uh what was it the preserve what were we yeah. playing the yeah, preserve the Santa Lucia it was, it was preserve. Like, it wasn't a lot of speaker going on. It was too much beauty. I think this, I think the music was gonna take away the, from the beauty as this uh Yeah, I like course. hearing hearing the animals and being a part of nature <laughs> and uh... Hey Dougie, let me tell you about let me tell you about seeing how far right here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so he said, Hey, uh, it was myself, uh Steve Malbine, um uh, Buddy Lewis and Chris Spencer. And that's a group. group Malbon right said, "Hey, we're going to play the preserve." And, and granted, I didn't know where the hell we we're going. The preserve is up in the. It's up in the cloud. It's near heaven. The the the, the court <laughs> is near heaven. <laughs> like it's probably about it's about twenty miles from heaven. And and you you you're going through the clouds. And once you like, cause you know it's always overcast in in the Pebble Beach world, right? In Monterey. So you go, you go up this mountain. And I'm like, there's no way in the world we're playing golf today. I don't know what the hell this guy is thinking that we're, that we're about to do. And he, he kept saying in the Malbon true fashion, bro, just chill with me. I'm telling you, man, we're gonna play golf today. And I was like, I was like, I was like, this man is nuts. So as as we went up this uh, this mountain, we get through the clouds. Whoa, beautiful. I, the, sun, the clouds don't go that high, right? And and we get there, and so I'm like, I'm seeing every animal known to man cross <laughs> across my path. Out of the sanctuary. So, so I'm like, all right, well, you know, let's let's get to the clubhouse. He stops. He stops in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> he stops in the middle of the street, and we're like talking to horses. Like we're just talking to horses, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got it all recorded. I got it. I got it. Uh, no, we're going to put this video. up. We're going to put that up. There. Nah, it's the funniest thing. So we get there. We play this beautiful course. And it was it was probably one of the most beautiful days I ever had on a golf course. But it was no quite me. experience. So, yes, I, he, he loves the animals. And he loves the um, – I think he's talking to them, too. Yeah. I love that group. I love Buddy and Chris. I had a great time with you guys. We got to run yeah, it back. Fun. Well, now I'm jealous because I'm coming to, to be the fifth ball that, that day because you talk about the beauty of that golf course, but now we got to talk about the messiness right now of this whole live PGA Tour thing, Stephen. From your seat, I mean, when you got this news last week, because Will and I, we haven't actually discussed it here on Beyond the Fairway um, yet, but last week the golf world's turned upside down. You outside looking in, what's your attitude and take on what we've now come to learn as now a partnership between – the PIF and the PGA tour. I mean, it, it, it's, I'm probably like everyone else, you know, I was, I was, I was shocked, but at the same time, like sometimes the media like steers people to make get brainwashed and, 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 you know, be fearful. And there's a lot of stuff going on where like, you know, I'm trying to like, Johnny Cash, like walk the line type of guy. You know what I mean? I don't like to be too far over here or over there. I just like to kind of understand that, like, you know, if half the country thinks one thing and the other half the country thinks the other thing, it's it's interesting. But at the same time, like, I don't really have that much of an opinion on it. You know, I, I never had, like, real strong opinions of people are doing wrong or people are doing right. It's just kind of like, wow, this is, this is amazing that this is happening. And obviously, um, amazing how like good, amazing or like what the hell amazing. It just, what the hell? I can't believe that this is happening. You know, I couldn't believe it was happening a year or two ago when everyone was getting attacked, you know, for, for doing what they felt was right for themselves as a professional, you know, mm -hmm. like, you're attacking someone who's trying to provide for his family and, you know, mixing in the sports washing and the this and the blood money and the that. And, you know, my thought is like, well, the government, you know, the U.S. government is in business and friends with Saudi, but like that's OK to look past the morally wrong stuff they're doing so that we can get gas and we can, 
you know, do everything else they're doing with the Saudis, but like everyone's going to attack 20 golfers for, for doing for it, what they right. found right. right, you know, and it's their choice. It's not like these are individual independent contractors that play golf to make a living, you know, and it was like, yeah, but the legacy, the legacy of the tour, this and that. And it's like, to me, my legacy is my kids. Like, that's my legacy is my family and my kids. And so, I don't know, interesting times. Obviously, I'm like everyone else. I'm just really curious to see what happens and how everything, how, how that cookie crumbles. Yeah, it's, it is an interesting kind of space and moment. And, you know, I, it's it's been interesting to watch and hear all the different sides and the takes and the, the Jimmy Dunn did this and, the, and Jay Monahan's this. But I tell you what. After hearing kind of how that players meeting went up at RBC last week, um, Will, it sounded like the players was coming for Monahan's head. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm not fully mad at Jay Monahan, and I say that because he did what everybody who was in power do. What take the money? <laughs> take it's it's about money. Like it, it, I I just I just get I just get mad at. It's so funny when I talk to all my friends, especially my white friends. They 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 put they put they put they put Monahan like like he was the beacon of morality. Now, granted, Monahan did say some certain things that you know put him in that in that regard. But I mean, that's what happens. You get promised all the time, and things change. Shit. I mean, I I I just voted for a guy, my senator. I asked him to make some promises towards me. He didn't do it. So that's just that just. <laughs> That's what happens. Like I don't. I, I felt like I was a place of privilege when I was talking to my friends. Like, bro, this is this is what happened. But this is what got you upset right here. Like, this is this this broke the camel. Strata broke the camel back. So, I mean, it's, it is what it is. Like, you know, it, it was it was a business decision. So, not saying right or wrong, but it was a business decision. We've seen this done before. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, and Steve, how do you balance the, the morality of things? You know, in these business decisions, because you know it's not a seat that I've been in, and I'm sure you've had to. You know, either suppliers or whatever had to look at the holistic uh, approach of doing business with certain companies. I mean, you've you've partnered with so many different brands. Like, how, what's the process like? It's tough, man. You know, you don't know what's really going on most of the time, right? Mm. So, like, I think it's like gut feeling, gut instinct. You know, like you don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like there's no, it's so hard in today's age with content everywhere and information everywhere. And, you know, I have five friends that swear about this and the other five swear about that. And they're directly opposite. It's very hard to know who to listen to and where to get your news from. And, you know, like what happened with Monaghan and all of that with the Saudis, like who, who knows? <laughs> All right, well, look, Steve, we got to get you out of here, but you are the king of L.A., and the U.S. Open is in your backyard-ish, your former backyard, but we're going to say your backyard because you still got the spot there on Fairfax. Number one, have you ever snuck on LACC? Um, uh, have you ever played LACC? And what is your take on just kind of how this, this U.S. Open event is kind of taking over L.A. right now? No, I've never snuck on. They got barbed wire fences all the way around it. It's nearly impossible. Um, I have played it a bunch, and I'll tell you a good one. The last time I played it, or maybe about a year ago, uh, you you know, you got to park in the parking lot, and then you leave your bag, and you go in the locker room, and you get changed, or you get ready, and then you pop out on the other side back by the restaurant. And they used to, they renovated, but they used to have this, like, starter stand, which was this small starter stand in the middle. So I'm walking to the starter stand and all of a sudden there's four golf pros coming out of the pro shop, walking right at me. And I'm like, Oh shit. That's like, never a good sign. What have I done? What have I done? You know, like, what did I already do? All I did was went through the locker room, put my shoes on and now I'm here and here they come. And they said, Mr. Marvin, we're so thankful you're here. I'm so and so and so and so and so and so and introduced themselves and I said, Oh my God, I thought y'all were gonna kick me out of here already, you know, and I got a good <laughs> laugh and I've been friends with them ever since. So the place is a bit intimidating, but they're really sweet and they're they're there's some great members that I'm friends with. The staff is amazing, the pros, the pro shop is obviously a gorgeous, gorgeous setting. Um, it's right in the ba backyard of Beverly Hills. You know, the golf course is great. Play the walk 
the 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 big one in the morning and have lunch and then you take the cart on the other third 18 for to, to yeah. finish out your 36 holes but yeah i love it i love it i can't imagine how tough they're making it for these guys this week because it's it's tough normally but when they're playing with the rough and backing up par threes and shortening up par threes like it's gonna be some good you know get your popcorn well let's yeah. get into it we're talking about shortening up the par threes here's the fifth there at uh at LACC, you see that little finger there in the front left corner, excuse me, the 15th uh, there. You see that little, like, finger. They said this hole can stretch to be, like, 150 and change or to 78 and change. And, Steve, I feel like this is a hole or shot where you got to be exact. Yeah, that 70-yard wedge is tough. I, I heard a saying they asked Tom Watson once. They said, what do you do when you have a 50-yard wedge? He said, I fire my caddy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything is not the it's not the most comfortable shot anybody wants. <laughs> oh man, hey, but so do you like sports betting and all that stuff's big right now? What is who's your pick for the U.S. Open, and who do you think as we look at the odds here? We've got Scheffler leading the way, uh, Rom trailing right behind. Even Brooks is there, top three guys this this year. Brooks already is second at the Masters, won the PGA Championship, and now coming in as the third. You got a pick here, Stevie. I take Brooks. Mm. I well, take why Brooks. Take, why you take? Why That's you taking strong. Brooks? Because Brooks is he. He had the lead at the Masters, and he went out there and he played to not lose instead of playing to win. Claude Harmon's my buddy. Um, I know he said Brooks said in the uh, the last day of the PGA Champ, he said I'm gonna play like a caveman. Mm. So Brooks playing like a caveman is going to be really hard to beat, meaning just hit it as hard as you can and don't practice swing and walk up and hit it by the hole, mm. play fast, ram the putts. And that guy playing to win, you know, I think he, I think it was a hard pill he had to swallow at Augusta being up on Rom and just trying to make pars and like try, playing to not lose first. Like you said, he said he's, he finished that PGA championship. He played like a caveman. So the thought of him out there thugging it out like a caveman is it's very hard for me to believe they can beat him. Yeah. Yeah. The thought I, of I, any golfer just out there thugging it out is, is, is awesome. And I, I'm so appreciative of you saying that shit. <laughs> out here, bro, hey, Brooks out here thugging it out. Will. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm not, <laughs> I'm not mad, but speaking of thugging it out and go ahead and roll that clip from last week of the RBC, Steve, we got to get you out of here. But I want to watch this a couple of times because Adam Hadwin had his ass lit up by security. This is what happens when you try to spray champagne in Canada when you are Canadian. You go ahead and get absolutely obliterated. Steve, did you see this clip? And real, as we run this back, though, before I get your take, watch Amanda Ballet, or excuse me, Amanda Renner coming around the backside in the pink. Absolutely rolling. She is hysterical. During him being tackled, I thought it was. I laughed. I thought it was funny. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah. No, I love it. I love I, it. I, I mean, I, tough. That's tough. I, I just, I just, I just really hope the front office of the Carolina Panthers saw this footage <laughs> because I have never seen anybody shoot through an a gap like that. Hit him with a hit him with a swim move. Swim move. Can you imagine had the dude? swim move and just and Man. just to the ground, bro? I mean, you got him. You should have got the security guard on here on the on the pod with us. I, I can't find I mean, his name. Yeah, we can't find his name. Like what? What went wrong with that guy's morning to do that? Like, whoa, <laughs> a champagne bottle. You're gonna tackle him like it's a machete. <laughs> hey, all I gotta say is I'm glad it was Canada. I'm glad it was Canada because the reports say, and this is from Adam Hadwin's wife, says he got up and apologized for being tackled. That's some Canadian yeah. shit. Adam yeah. Hadwin's like, hey, man, sorry. Sorry I was spraying the champagne and celebrating my countrymen, but but damn, you didn't have to light me up like that. <laughs> he won't do that again. Hey, they gave, him, they gave him the bottle back. That's what I think is hysterical. Hadwin gets Empty. up and then gets the bottle back. Like here you go, Adam. Keep I love you. Amanda was dying laughing like that. That's great. <laughs> All right, Stevie. We'll look at it one more time, and then we'll let you get out of here. But we got to send you out of here the only way that we know how. We're gonna call it Rap Foursome right here on Beyond the Fairway Podcast. Steve Malvin, you're gonna go play golf with four rappers, dead or alive. I don't care who they are. I don't care when they were around. We want to know who you pulling up to the golf course with. 
With the four rappers? Four rappers. Yeah. You playing a five ball. You and four. Uh, me and Q Wop, schoolboy, for sure. Um, I'll go Big L, mm. Andre mm. 3000. Big L. I like that. Pimp C. That's it. That's all you got. That's the fun foursome. And Pimp That's C. That's funny shit there. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey I mean, man. Big L Big L said, forget the glamour and glitz. I'm from New York and I ain't never been a fan of the Knicks. That's Woo! right. That's all I need to hear right there from Big L. That's right. <laughs> I've, gone, I've been in memory lane. Music is the closest thing to a time machine. And when you it said really Big L, is. music when, and when smell said, and, and when, fragrance. When you, when you said Big L, I, I imagine me with my big white t shirt on and exactly. Air Force, Force Ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big L Harlem's finest. Yeah, hey, absolutely. Hey, Steve Malbin, I know you got a busy week there in L.A. Will and I, man, we can't thank you enough for coming in here, sitting down with us, going to be on the fairway. You got parties. You got things going on at the at the crib this week, man. So blessings to you, man, and we're going to see you around the way, cuz. Yeah, you guys are the best. See you at the shop. Come see me on Melrose Place. Doug, we just got done with Malbon, the GOAT. I think I, he's I the GOAT status. He's in, he's, in go, he's in gold status to me. Like, it, it, from, from, I think he is from, from, I'm not, seeing, I don't disagree. I'm seeing with you. from the, what he thought that can appear on clothing, bringing community together, and the fact that he just don't give a damn about nothing is no. gold status. No. He, no. he he's completely unbothered by anything that is no, he's, he's free. You know, Steve Malvin is one of the most free people, and you know what's, what's, what's cool about, you know, his freedom and how he goes about his day is, is, you know, we talk about all the time creating community and getting people to kind of buy into this, this effort. And, you know, sometimes I feel like this, these, you know, growing the game is such a cliche taboo ass statement, but, yeah. but the cool part is Steve Malbin has found his way to grow the game. And how's he done yeah. it through Malbin golf club, the brand bringing people together. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to the spot on Fairfax or out of Melrose, man, that, that's a dope. It's like a community hangout. Cats skateboarding dope. up and down the street. He got simulators in there. He got clubs. You can come in there and shop. It throws parties kind of frequently there. It's, it's a it's a whole it's a super vibe, and uh, I I just think you know we we get we me I get really myopic in how to grow the game. Are we taking it to little black kids and little poor kids and for giving them the gospel of golf? But it's like nah, man. I mean, there's there's ways to grow the game, and I, I love how Steve is yeah. has, has done so. He's done it his way. I mean, he's on some on some and, Frank Sinatra shit. And, 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 and we and we talk about that that diversity word, man. It, it's not just towards blacks. It's it's not diverse. That diversity yeah. it means yeah. everybody, inclusive, everybody. So. I love it. He, he's uh, he is he's uh, he's being diverse in his actions, and 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 I, and I, and I think it's so dope. Um, yeah, and, and just leveraging, leveraging his expertise, you know, and, and yeah. from music and marketing and media, and we heard him talk about graffiti. I mean, he brought all these pieces together to create some shit in the game, man. And I I really I, I appreciate it. And the thing about it is, like, I've known Mal, I've known Steve like probably probably five years now. And he's the same cat. He never, you know, with the, with the success of the brand and the success of of his popularity or the celebrity of the guy now, like this dude has never changed his cadence. He never he's changed. Cadence. Never. Like I think the only thing that's different is that he stopped drinking. And I think that's really the only difference the, in Malvin. That's it. It's hey, now, it's so it's so funny. He he never changed his cadence. I did a uh, one of the first times I I known him for a while, but I did a, a Zoom call. We was talking business, and obviously I need his expertise. And he was uh he put the he put the camera he was sitting on his couch he put the camera uh, on his coffee table but the camera was looking up and I'm looking right into his Johnson and he's just <laughs> he just talking yeah so he, he cross he looking like um Kim, he like Kim Basic Kim Basic here in Basic Instant he just crossing his legs I'm like oh 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 just just and I'm just, just talking to him dog I'm talking to him and his balls about yo bro I need help uh understand this um this this clothing business so you and you and steve have a unique relationship as to who you've talked to with malvin you've talked to his balls you've talked to random horses off the side of the street this is right y'all yeah. need to re-examine we, like y'all's relationship because yeah we we we, ga we gambled we gambled on a sloth race that was that was exciting <laughs> you, you know sloth you know what sloths I, the slowest moving animal in the world there you go we gambled and you gambled on a 
just the, a sloth racing is a uh, is an oxymoron in itself. So uh, it is to bet it on it, a sloth. How how long was the race? <laughs> well, I don't know. You just killed the joke, so it don't even matter no more. So uh, I'm done. Anyway, here's a new joke. Let's talk <laughs> about uh, let's let's talk about the laughter that is going to happen when these players are playing this George C. Thomas design mm. LACC. And uh, I'm, you know what? I'm excited to see this because this is a different form of golf. Say Dougie. more. I want to hear and more I about, say that about because your point of view. Be, re, reason I say that because this is the first time U.S. Open has had a configuration such as this. Mm. Five par threes, three par fives, and par 70. So I am so excited to see how these guys, you know, navigate uh, this golf course because, um, you know, George C. Thomas is one of those guys to try to make a course within a course. It's pretty much what he's known for. He always have little loopholes and different ways to attack certain holes. So oh, I am course, excited. Course within a course. Yeah. What does that mean? What's, what's a course so like, a course? Cor- like course within a course. So if you notice, like, you know, there's different routes that you can take to attack the green there's sometimes two fairway you know two one fairway over here one fairway over there but still the same hole you know and so mm-hmm. he just always have different like loopholes and you know different terrains and just a way that you can choose to to attack a a particular green and and uh i'm just i'm just excited to see how these guys you know manage and move you know move and and i think the way the course is set up is really going to be a tell it's going it's going to tell a lot on the confidence of their ball striking like if you see one, you know, player take this route, you can be like ah, he don't really feel it today. I, I can I can see it. it. It can it can be said without being said. So I'm I'm really excited about this U.S. Open. I can't wait till we we fully dive in it. Yeah, well, you know, you know, I'm, and I'm I'm saying that question to you a little bit tongue in cheek. You know, I knew what the hell it meant. It, yeah, it also talks about the varying tees, right? So you can play. Yeah. A, we talk about the fifteenth with in the Marvin episode where you can play from seventy eight yards back to one fifty eight, and you can mix tees, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, when we look at what's your, what's these, the what's uh, the thought what's the thought what's the thoughts on the par three going down to double digits? What's your thoughts on that? You think it's good for the game? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we're gonna look here at the fifteenth again, and, and you're talking about the the two hundred and thousand yard par three that they have there that everybody's been talking about i mean here's the thing you can have a 290 yard par three um the, the way to do that one is is to have a firm course conditions right i mean these guys you can't really land the ball on the green it's also playing down i haven't seen the number but i think it's probably eight or nine down so it's 290 call it 280 but you're still gonna have to land it some two 260 max Right. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested to see kind of and, and it, it's the there's kind of this bowl and kind of run up to that green that we're talking about. So there's no shortages of way to, to play that particular hole. But, I, you know, look, it's the U.S. Open. Make this shit hard. I want to see a, a winning score over par. Like, I, I, I just miss that aspect of the U.S. Open. I think you go back to Chambers Bay and the U.S. Open's trying or the USGA has, has been trying these random golf courses, uh, trying to capture the magic. Aaron Hill's another one and, uh, to, to kind of go along with that. Also produced a, a winner in Brooks Koepka. Um, I, I like the options. I miss the, the deep, rough, firm, fast U.S. Open. I feel like they've cut all these trees out and they're going to go back to the yesteryear of golf, blah, blah, blah. The yesteryear for me in golf is when the U.S. Open had super thick, lush, rough, and the fairways were firm and fast, rock hard greens, and and I think that's what we're gonna get. But I do what I do like about the LACC is the angles in which the balls need to bounce into the greens because there's some sideboards on some fairways and just off the left, a little bit a la Riviera, uh, same designer, same same designer, exactly. So but you, you know, get a, but, some of those same little features. Yeah, same features, and you still have the same question at the tee box, like uh, like uh, I think there's I think par six hole par four where you have the opportunity to drive the green but however it kind of gets you the same uh question as number 10 over riviera you know green is easy to get to but holding the damn green is the key <laughs> <laughs> so yeah ain't so, that some stuff like yeah you can hit it you can hit it up here but after you yeah, get up but, here it's, it's a wrap <laughs> it's a wrap for you it's a wrap so, so i i think i think it's, it's gonna be an exciting test of golf and i think this is what um what the what the public is is waiting for? Just I hate to say it, but see these guys struggle just a bit, just a little bit, right? I, I'm I'm all for struggling ass U.S. Open. Beat these guys. I want to see somebody. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and role play it. 
I want to see somebody come off the course like oh, you got you got Amanda Renner and hey, they talk about the course conditions. Man, no what, man, the hell with this golf course. Hold on, let me let me ask. I'm Amanda Renner. All right, all right go ahead, do Amanda. Right. Do Amanda come off okay. the course. I just okay. played. I shot I shot two of them. Okay. So Doug Smith, you just coming off a top a tough golf course. How do you feel? You know what, man, the hell with this course. Like, I can't stand this place. Get me through four days. I'm trying to get my check and get out of here. Like, you know what, if it's a live player, they're going to say some shit like, just get me back to live for the remaining whatever tournaments we have left in our, <laughs> our tour's complete life. And if you're a PGA Tour player, it's like, you know what, just get me back to the John Deere or the American Express where I can shoot 30 under and, and have confidence. I w <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, uh, it's just saying, I want to I want to see saying, frustrated me, players. <laughs> give, me back, give me back give me back to live where I have eight tournaments left and they and they're spanned out over the next 18 months. Perfect. Just hey, I feel back. like I feel like the live the live league and long drive are like in the same boat right now. It's like next year is it even going to exist? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, hit the ball you, far. It's a sport. Hey, like, I'm just how, how do you say it? Jay Monahan is the CEO of three tours right now. <laughs> <laughs> how you like that apples? Hey, I tell you what. Everybody wants to talk shit about Jay Monahan right now. Hey, what he did was create job security in it the contract. He said, "You can fire me as commissioner, but damn it, I'm gonna be over here, and ain't nothing you can do about it because I got I got the Saudis with me now because I'm gonna be hey, he, over here living. He said, ain't gonna be no said. tour, but I'm living." He said, he said, he said, in the, in the words of Roger Steele, how you living? <laughs> I love oh, it. man. Love it. Hey, well, I know you got a busy week, man. Let's talk about it a little bit. You guys to do some stuff with Roger Steele. We just mentioned him. You're going to do, do some, uh, we talked about on the front of the show. You've got, uh, the USGA's grow the game initiative. You've got some other ancillary things. How are you going to manage this week? I mean, you're already on East Coast time. You're on the West Coast. You got parties. You got activations. You got content. You got beverages man, to have. Like, I, I how you gonna this, manage man, this week, man? Yeah, we're uh, Roger and I also. Well, Roger Roger's a key uh, to a fireside chat. I'm just moderating a fireside chat for doers. So shout out to doers um, and all the awesome things that they're doing in golf, as well as uh, their relationship with the USGA. So that's always a positive. Uh, leaving here and then going to um, KPMG, and then we got underage tour. We are in the busy days of summer. It's about to begin, and then we're going to Tahoe. And Firestone with it. Uh, Man, I was talking about the U.S. Open Week. You done spun it in the Tahoe. Know, That's a mother way. I'm talking about like I you know. got Sorry. Top Golf parties, 2K parties, Melbourne got oh, a party. Yeah. You got USGA Top got a party. Yeah, yeah. Like, Top Golf parties, Top Golf parties. I mean, say, you know my schedule better than I do. That's it. Yeah, well, I'm supposed yeah. to because shit, you can't remember it, and you are gonna call me tomorrow and be like, hey, where am I supposed to be? Hey, at dude, I, hey, tomorrow. Night? I am losing. I am losing friends over my memory because I be forgetting. <laughs> 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 I I lost a good friend. I lost a good friend this week because of my of my memory. What's wrong with your memory? Does it don't work? You just I I you, you don't know, remember. I know why, I know, know I know we, I know we like LOLing right now. But I I had for the public. I had COVID uh, two years ago, and I almost went to the on a ventilator. My my mind ain't been right since. I can't I can't remember they, nothing. They sucked the just, knowledge out of you with that ventilator. Yes, it, it did. Messed up. That's <laughs> it, it, it. It it did. It did. <laughs> And, and, you know, and I think I'm trying, I think, I'm, you know, I'm playing a lot, a lot golf, a lot of more golf now. And they say, you know, playing golf can kind of ruin your memory too. Yeah. Cause you, you know? gotta, you gotta get rid of bad shots, you know? You gotta... exactly, exactly. So how, you know, you're playing bad golf is one, you lose your memory. There's five ways how you know you're playing bad golf. One, you lose your memory. Two, two. Three, four, three, four, and five. That's the act two. Is it? You missed that joke too. Damn no, I didn't. I, I, I gave you a soft giggle, and that's about all you're gonna get. <laughs> hey, everybody, happy U.S. Open week for me, Will. Even Mama was in here, man. Yo, I'm enjoying it, Will. I know you got a busy week. I'm gonna be here chilling, feet up. I'm gonna have streaming services up. I'm gonna have the main joint up, and uh, you can catch uh, you catch the U.S. Open right here, Golf Channel, NBC Sports, Peacock. Where else you wanna be? Hey, and Will. Just for the record, I call them house shoes. I, hey, I'm so I'm so you laughed at me when I used to put my shoes on the back backdrop in my home studio. But it's so funny you well, got your too. I was paying homage to your punk ass. Oh, okay, that's you what, know it was. what I'm saying. That's all. Just hey, a little homage. Hey, 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 so you go ahead and feed up and a shot link up. I'm jealous. That's uh, when shot link gonna be in one lap. I'm gonna have 
It's going to be... I'm, I'm, that, I'm going to put a picture up, man. I'm going to geek that's when you, out. That's when, you actually, that's when you actually get to have the opportunity to be a golf nerd. And I love those those days, those opportunities. Oh, right, fact, I'm, I'm going to be sending Brando like holes in his arguments. I'm going to be like, Brando, that is not correct what you just said. The hell with that. And by the way, before we get out of here, for all the loyal listeners we have beyond the fairway, I wanted to ask Brandon some more stuff last week, so we apologize for not getting to some of that meat and potatoes of that conversation, but we ran out of time. Brandon's a busy dude, so uh, don't worry. We're going to track him down and figure out more on that Chambly story. But, hey, for this week, Dougie Fresco, Will Lowry, appreciate y'all. Holla! Holla!